Welcome to another Q&A session for the best club in history, Real Madrid, hosted by Gael Manny. This is a Madridismo.org production. Um, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving weekend. Or if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, just a nice uh, regular weekend anyway. And uh, basically, for Real Madrid fans, it was a pretty good weekend. So today, to discuss the derby, Real Madrid v. Atletico de Madrid, we have Apexit and Tanur. Hi, guys. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, so I don't think I actually need to introduce you anymore. But just in case we had n n new listeners uh, who didn't know you already, Apexit is a fellow teammate for, from madridismo.org, and Tanuj is the realmadridfan.com, and he's also part of the Merengue Bites team. So um, before we start discussing the game, I'd like to maybe take a few seconds, if you don't mind, to uh, remember those who <clears throat> didn't have such a good weekend after all. Uh, I guess you've heard the news about Gary Speed. Um, and uh, Tanush, is he, was he playing in the same Sheffield that you're living in? Is it yeah, the same? Uh, yeah. He played uh, for a few seasons uh, here at uh, Sheffield for Sheffield United. Yeah. And uh, he was currently the, the Wales manager as well. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. So, given the, the circumstances, I guess, you know, it must be very hard for, for his family. So, we're sending our hearts out to them. And um, also, I think it's a good time to remember Antonio Puerta, because it would have been his birthday this weekend. And on a more personal note, uh, I would like to say hi to our teammate, Karan. Uh, he's having... Um, uh, not, I mean, he's having a, a family issue right now, so we want to say hi and tell him that we're keeping him in our thoughts and prayers, and we hope to have him back very soon. Uh, okay, so now on with the analysis. Uh, Real Madrid won 4 1. So I want to say congrats to Carito because she totally nailed the, the score ahead of time. And so, what was your general feeling about the game, guys? Um, I. I let, let me start off uh, by saying, um, even though it was a great win, the what has happened uh, after after the game uh, with Gary Speeds is uh, uh, that it just is difficult to comprehend uh, footballing uh, football in right now. Okay. Um, but if I have to, which is very difficult for me right now. Uh, I would say it was a good win, not a not a perfectly uh, great win. I would say first half we were not that not that uh, influential. Second half was much better uh, comparatively. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Going back to Gary Speed, did you know that he was like feeling that bad? No. It, it's uh. It's strange because he was recording uh. For football focus on the same uh, a few hours before uh, he allegedly uh, committed suicide. Yeah. So he was part. He was happy, and I've read some accounts of people who worked with him uh, on the same day, and uh, they're saying he, he was completely fine. He was happy. He was joking. Uh, it just it's difficult to comprehend what somebody's got in in the back of his mind, even uh, despite the laughs and the smiles. Yeah, well, you know, it kind of, it hits home because I've had um, two in my family like that. And um, yeah, you, I, I don't think you can really put yourself in their shoes. There, There's something, it's just, I don't know, you cannot understand, you cannot judge and... Just for those who are left, the family and the loved loved ones who are left with all the pain, it's also, I think it's terrible. But, yeah. Oh, Pekshit, you want to say something? Yes, well, I would just like to start uh, uh, saying a few words about Gary Speed. Uh, what a, what an absolute legend he was, you know. Uh, 500 plus uh, games uh, he played in the Premier League. He played for, uh, played for Leeds United, played for Bolton. 
and uh, uh, he he was also the manager of uh, the uh, the Welsh national team yeah. and uh, yeah Wales started doing so well you know they they won four of their last five games you know and uh, and uh, Robbie Savage who uh, spoke to him just before his death that he was saying that uh, uh, speed was absolutely normal that he was joking so uh, i mean i was really really sad you know and uh, shook uh, to uh, to to actually hear about his death you know yeah and uh, 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 coming back to the game i thought uh, uh, we played really well but the goal that we conceded was a cheap one you know our, our marking was really poor uh Sergio Ramos actually put his hands up uh, uh looking at the linesman but the linesman uh, the uh, the player who actually scored wasn't uh, wasn't actually offside mm-hmm. so so yeah our uh, our marking was really poor and we uh, did not have any support okay uh, apex it we we're kind of losing the sound on you so if you can um uh, make sure to speak up a little more just to make sure we hear everything okay Yes, okay, certainly. thanks. <laughs> okay, so um, the first topic I wanted to discuss was uh, last playing uh, again uh, as a right back. So um, I was wondering, uh, a general wondering was, you know, if you see uh, if he plays better or if it doesn't matter when he's partnered with somebody like Varane or with Pepe or even with other people in the midfield, is there a certain ease that he has with certain players or it doesn't matter at all, at all and it shouldn't matter anyway? That was one thing I was wondering. And the other thing, what, what you thought about uh, his performance yesterday? Uh, well, I'm not sure about the partnership, but then I have uh, uh, consistently said that Lars Diara is a wonderful player, you know, when it comes yeah. to defending. Yeah, when it comes to ball winning and defending, he's, he's probably one of the best. And uh, and he proved it again. You know his his defending was really really world class. I would say, and uh, he he didn't uh, uh, lose the ball. You know, and he just uh, kept clearing the ball when uh, uh, when the ball was in the uh, danger zone. You know, so I'm not uh, quite sure about the partnership. But then when it comes to defending, he he's probably one of the best. Okay, over Arvelo. Sorry. Uh, do you think he's uh, one of the best, uh, better than Arbeloa, or or you can compare, or I don't know? Uh, well, I would say uh, uh, it's uh, not fair to compare the two, you know, but then okay. uh, both, yeah, both the players have their uh, uh, qualities, you know. But then Las Diara, when it comes to winning the ball, he's, he's really, really, really good at it, you know. Okay. Tanush? Um... I would say Arbeloa is is probably uh, the number one when it comes to right back position. Okay. Lars is the second option, uh, more mostly because Arbeloa is more consistent, while Lars has his moments of uh, madness, if I will. Um, so Arbeloa, even though he has his ups and downs as well. Uh, Lars was real. Lars has been playing good uh, as a backup option with uh, Arbeloa being injured uh, of late. Okay. So you don't think there's maybe, uh, for instance, a particular opponent or a particular game configuration when one is maybe uh, better than the other? You think they're just um, just as good or Arbeloa number one and Lars number two? Uh. At this at this level, I don't think there is any uh, any. I mean, any weak team, if I will, because all of them, uh, all of all of the teams play in the all play in the La Liga, which is the top division. So every every side has to be treated equal. Every side has to be considered uh, strong enough to beat us. He uh, he, ha beat us at home last season. So we cannot be complacent and we cannot say this is a weak team and we can play one player over the other. Okay. Uh, but having said that, I think uh, Arbeloa is more level-headed than Lasses. So okay. he's he's probably a better choice when it comes to games of higher stature such as the Classico. Okay. <laughs> Apex sheet, you want to defend Lass? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, not not really, not really, because uh, uh, last has his uh, moments of madness, you know, as uh, as my friend uh, Tanish pointed out, you know. 
So yeah. Uh, yeah, when defending you, you need to be uh, calm. You know, you need to be composed. And uh, and in big games, if you uh, if you give away free kicks in the dangerous positions, then uh, uh, then uh, you can actually concede goals. So yeah, when it comes to uh, 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 keeping your com- uh, keeping your composure, I think uh, uh, Lars is uh, not uh, good at it. You know, so he he makes some uh, really really dangerous challenges, and uh, he uh, he's quite vulnerable. Uh, you know, that thing. Okay, okay. Well, um, I think it's kind of related, uh, talking about keeping your composure. Uh, let's talk about Di Maria. Uh, he was back from injury uh, on Saturday. And so I think there was a lot of plus and a little bit of minus, right, about his comeback. Like on the plus side, he's the one who uh, enabled Benzema on the action that got us the first uh, penalty. He scored the second goal. And on the minus side, unfortunately, he seemed to um, give in to theatrics again uh, a little. Uh, Pamela, that you know, I guess, from Paseo La Castellana, was tweeting about it. She was saying something that was hilarious, I found. She said, Di Maria needs to stop flopping around like a fish. Uh, and uh, I know, Tanuj, you were tweeting about that also. So... Yep. Uh, I think the, the action that I most uh, remember was one of the first where I think it's Perea, but I'm not sure who uh, c- makes a foul and uh, Di Maria gets up like he's OK and he falls back right on the ground again. Uh, and things uh, ended up heating up between Pepe and Perea and Diego was booked after that. So it was like I thought, oh, maybe somebody's going to be, you know, sent out. So. Uh, was a little dangerous and I was a bit disappointed. But yeah, so overall, you know, a, a balance of the pros and cons of Di Maria uh, on Saturday. Um, good, good. Let me start off by the pros first. Yeah. Um, he scored a great goal. He was, uh, he played uh, with much aggression. He played with. Um, attacking finesse that he uh, that he has and uh, he created chances for others he created chances for himself as him, himself as well sorry and uh, let me get to the cons which were <laughs> which were more mostly highlighted more of the cons rather than the pros um, his play acting his theatrics uh, it's not it's not new firstly it's reignited to uh, over the league over the weekend and uh, it's embarrassing it really is embarrassing hmm. i don't know how it's not embarrassing for him but for a fan to defend defend him it's really difficult okay unless unless you turn a blind eye to it but otherwise it's really difficult and embarrassing okay uh, yeah well i would just like to say that uh, di maria is a very very talented player you know and when uh, talented players uh, do that, it's really, really disappointing, you know, for the fans to watch that, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah uh, trying to get a fellow professional book is, I mean, you just cannot justify it, you know. It, it's silly, you know. It's really, really silly of him to do that. And and he doesn't do it once. He, he uh, doesn't do it twice. He just does that over and over again, you know. And uh, he was he was lucky, actually, uh, not to be booked for simulation, you know. You know, the, the referee should have booked him for a, a, a simulation, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, when it comes to his performance, I thought he was really good. You know, he scored a second goal and uh, Ronaldo's pass to him was was uh, really good, you know. In oh, yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, uh, Ronaldo's pass was really, really good. And uh, he's, he, I mean, he's really, really talented. But then again, he, he doesn't need to do that. You know, he, he, he doesn't need to dive and... Uh, uh, try and get uh, get a special professional book, you know. Hmm. I was wondering if uh, you thought that that can influence the the referee also. Like when he sees Di Maria on the ground, he's just yeah, he's just pretending, so he didn't get anything. You know what I mean? Yes. Like y- yeah. yes, it does. It does. Yes, it does. I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm uh, remembering uh, uh, the game uh, which Barcelona played against uh, uh, Getafe. You know, uh, yeah. Sergio Busquets. Yeah, Sergio Busquets is, uh, I mean, he also does uh, something similar, you know, he, he goes down far too cheaply. And uh, Busquets was doing it again and again in the match against uh, Getafe, you know, and the referee, he he just wasn't even uh, looking at him, you know. 
so so your reputation goes by you it only goes to show that your reputation is going to be with you and uh, w- uh, when it's a uh, contact in the box also the referee is not going to give a penalty because your your reputation is there with you okay yeah tanur yeah uh i agree that the reputation tends to build on and continue with you uh unless and until uh, di maria start gets his uh, act right i really don't understand what is the need of rolling around and uh, flapping just as pamela mentioned <laughs> uh i just don't understand what is the need of it it's probably that the game has uh, become the way that it is that one a player has to move dive around and uh, feign injury just to get another player booked it's yeah. it's uh, despicable but probably that's what the game has become now yeah i don't get it though because why why would you um stand up and and then fall fall down again it, you know if, if you're going to do that stay on the floor in the first place don't you know stand up and I know it's so obvious. Everybody's going to yeah, see that. It's it's absolute tomfoolery, uh, you know, I would just like to say. And and it makes the job of the referees even more difficult, you know. The the referees these days they are, they are, they uh, get so much flack these days, you know. Because the the game has become very very difficult, you know, uh, for the referees to 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 to, to actually uh, go out there and actually perform, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so it it makes the job of the referees even even more difficult, you know. and i'm also reminded of the fact that a, a referee in germany uh, tried to take his life away but then he was saved somehow uh, maybe those were uh, personal problems but then again when when a player is so much uh, when a player has so much talent why why does he do it i, I just failed to understand yeah yeah what well, i hope that you know he's going to get his act together and and keep playing great because at least on the plus side he he did deliver so well uh, on saturday so we we need, we definitely need him but we don't we don't need the extra uh acting job <laughs> yeah um okay well let's move on let's not focus on acting, the oh yeah act, sorry yeah go ahead acting job could actually be a movie featuring di maria I'm sorry. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, okay, I get it. <laughs> um okay, so we yeah, are as I was saying, let's not focus on on um the negative, you know, and uh and uh, keep moving. Uh well, let's focus on the negative a little bit more, but on Atleti's uh, goal, you say it was poor marking on our part. What happened exactly? Um well, yeah, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I thought it was uh, Marcelo's mistake because uh, uh, we don't man mark players; uh, we mark zones. So, so it came from the left hand side, you know. And uh, Sergio Ramos was actually uh, looking at the linesman. Yeah. But then uh, uh, there was no flag, uh, you know, and uh, he uh, he just left uh, uh, the the striker free, you know, and uh, and he scored, you know, Adrian. Uh, he just scored. Mhm. Okay. uh i agree marcelo wasn't uh, close enough or marking the player uh, properly to leave him free to uh, have play the little one two uh, with uh, adrian and uh, he scored really well over uh, casillas i think that was the only uh, only opportunity for casillas in the whole game if i'm not wrong um and uh, there there was uh, i think ramos was looking at the referee at the linesman uh, because there was a hint of offside there as uh, there was a player in between and there pro- possibly he touched the ball uh, onto the onto the atletico player but i think uh, i think it was a uh, it was a good call and it wasn't offside so it was a good goal in my opinion okay Uh, uh, I would just like to add something. Uh, yes, Kassias, sure. Yeah, Casillas also is uh, to be blamed here. You know, uh, the, the the goalkeeper should never get uh, beaten on their near post. But then Casillas was actually uh, beaten on his near post. So uh, uh, I thought it was a bad mistake. I don't think he was beaten at the near post. Uh, he, Adrian scored uh, by on the right corner from the left side of things. I thought uh, it was the near post. No, no. <laughs> well, no, no. We, we'll have to check that again. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I, I will uh, definitely go check that, see what happened. But okay, so but basically, uh, poor marking from Marcelo. Um, yeah. Okay. Another thing that was really um, that that caught my attention was that you know our ball possession possession was consti- consistently good was growing at the end of the game it was seventy three percent it started at seventy at uh, sorry fifty one uh, so we had also uh, the numeric advantage early in the game and yet aside from a penalty we were not able to score so um, uh, in the first half I mean so. I was wondering, um, you know, wh- what we were lacking in the first half, if it was something uh, that Atleti was doing particularly well or something that we were lacking, or if it was just bad luck. It was, uh, I would say, even though they were down to 10 men, uh, Atletico defended well. We we played, we kept the ball really well, but uh, Atletico had a solid back line. So I wouldn't say it was a lack of creativity, but more on uh, uh, the opponent's uh, good play in the in the first half. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I wouldn't say uh, that uh, we were not lucky. We, we did create chances, but, uh, but I thought that they defended really, really well, you know. And uh, we need to make uh, the, the most of our chances, you know, uh, whenever we get chances, we need to finish, uh, which I think we uh, did do. Uh, but in the first half, I thought they defended really well. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Chris Vikinga, uh, 1988, <laughs> decía on, uh, I wish, I'm sorry, was saying on Twitter uh, at halftime, that she wanted Granero, Higuain, and Benzema. Um, uh, not not Benzema. What did I write that? Who is she saying? Granero, Higuain, and somebody else on the pitch. Uh, Benzema was already on the pitch, so she wouldn't be saying that. Hmm, got that wrong. But anyway, uh, she she got uh, Higuain right. Uh, and I was therefore wondering what you thought of uh, Mourinho's substitutions. Uh, if uh, if they were particularly good or if it was... I mean, I guess what I'm asking is if it was the substitutions that unlocked the game somehow or if it was just that finally the hard work was paying off. Well, I thought that the substitutions were really good. Uh, but I would still say that uh, 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 that it was a, a collective effort, you know. Higuain coming on, he scored the third goal and he played a major part in the fourth goal. Uh, sorry, fourth goal. I mean, uh, so uh, replacing him with uh, Di Maria was uh, was a smart move, you know, because Di Maria he just runs his heart out, you know. So after 65-70 minutes, you know, he uh, doesn't uh, perform to the level uh, to the level at which the fans would actually uh, want him to perform. So I thought, uh, so I thought substitution was really good. Uh, Higuain for Benzema was really good, and uh, Higuain uh, did a really, really good job. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the substitutions were good, but they were pretty obvious, uh, come to think of it. Uh, Higuain came on uh, for Di Maria, which was uh, which was pretty uh, expected, I think, because Di Maria was coming back from an injury. Yeah. And uh, Higuain ma- made the most of the most of the Atletico Madrid's uh, uh, defensive laps or uh, or just. It's, uh, I don't know. I forgot the word. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> about the defensive laps and uh, made the most of it by coming on and scoring in the in the first two minutes, I think. So. Okay. It was a team effort, not just down to the in down to the substitutions. I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I uh, I think I got uh, uh, Chris Vikinga's. Um, tweet right now. I think she was uh, saying Granero, Iguain, and Callejon should join the pitch. And yes. she got Iguain and Callejon right. Uh, and you, Tanush, you wanted Granero or Sahin in, instead of Cristiano. Why was that? Uh, mostly because Cristiano uh, looked to be looked to be injured on two occasions. Okay. He, limped, he, he was limping on two instances. So with the Clasico in two weeks and uh, and he uh, next week, 
uh, it would have been possibly and the game already looking comfortably safe uh, i think uh, cristiano should have been taken off as well okay so it was more like a, a safety measure it wasn't so much because you you thought he wasn't playing well no 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 it was more of a safety measure that, rather than a, te- a technical problem okay um apex did you 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 i mean you want to add something else Yeah, well, I thought the same. You know, Ronaldo was limping. Uh, uh, you know, he he had some uh, a problem with his leg. You know, yeah. So, uh, and and uh, there were some nasty uh, challenges also on him. So <laughs> that that I think did a, a little bit of damage. Okay. So so I think uh, yeah. So I think uh, Ronaldo should have been taken off, uh, considering and uh, considering the fact that uh, we are going to uh, play our uh, biggest rivals in uh, Barcelona. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, we can move on to uh, to the actually the. Um, The intensity of the game. I I was thinking d- during the whole game, I was thinking a pick sheet must be super agitated and very unhappy with what's going on, <laughs> because uh, I I thought Atleti's players were really really, um, you know, that I don't know if they were playing hard or if they were just going um, too strong and it, it wasn't even fair anymore. Uh, but the thing is that's weird is that when you look at the the referee's decisions. He sent out two men from Atleti. He gave them like plenty of yellow cards. He gave us two penalties for what they did. So I I don't think we can say that he was being particularly um, uh, forgiving. But it's still it's still the impression I have after all that yeah, that it, they could have ended up with I don't know uh, eight men or or more yellow cards or whatever. I mean it was pretty pretty hard. Very true, very true. I I thought they were not playing football. They were they were playing some other sport, you know. And, <laughs> and the referee and the referee for uh, some reason kept the cards to his pocket, uh, which which you can actually defend because uh, because he sent out two players and uh, uh, they were no, they were uh, numerous bookings. Uh, so uh, the referee sometimes uh, what happens is they uh, refrain from booking too many players, you know, because then then the people start uh, uh, criticizing them, you know. For for actually showing too many uh, cards, but then I thought uh, uh, the referee should have shown uh, more <laughs> red cards, and uh, uh, only only two players were sent off, uh, which I thought uh, should have been uh, more, you know. What do you mean only two players were sent off? <laughs> How many more do you want? <laughs> no, I I mean to say th- those two were clear uh, red cards, you know, those those two. But then then again, there were so many nasty tackles. And I thought at least four players should have been sent off. But wait, because if you, I, uh, how many players can be sent off before uh, a game is just plain cancelled? Uh, four I players. Think it is, I'm uh, sorry. I think it is four players. Yeah. Four players. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Once four players are sent off, then uh, uh, we would have won two zero. You know. So if, four players uh, on the same team, though, right? Yeah, yeah, same team. Okay. Same team. If if they are sent off, then uh, then the team wins two nil, you know. Okay. Uh, I I disagree on one point that you mentioned. I think uh, the first red card wasn't fair uh, to Courtois. Uh, I think it was. It it would have been a yellow card that would have sufficed and a penalty, of course. He was in his box. Yeah, he charged, but. He wasn't the last man, or didn't uh, stop the goal-scoring opportunity completely because there were defenders getting back. So a yellow card would have been enough, in my opinion. Well, I would beg to differ on that. You know, he was the last man, and uh, you should see the uh, you should see the position of the defenders. You know, uh, once uh, uh, Benzema would have beaten him, he he would have been clear on goal. Uh, you know, so that was a clear goal-scoring uh, chance uh, with the go- uh, goalkeeper. Uh, which the goalkeeper actually uh, uh, tried to block, you know. So, so I it, thought that was a clear red card. It, obviously, uh, he he was last on goal because he's the goalkeeper. So defenders would most more often than not be in front of him. So, yeah, hmm. so it's uh, it's a given that that defenders would be in a, in a bad position when getting back. If Benzema is rounding off the goalkeeper and straight ahead or uh, to the goal, but having said that, uh, a yellow card and a penalty 
and it's a derby as well would have been uh, the right uh, decision in in my opinion of course Okay, well, that, I have a question then. I asked Javi about it, and he answered a little bit, and now uh, that I was listening to you guys, I, I had a little bit more information to understand, but I will still ask the question because I think it's interesting. Um, I, most of the time, when there's a penalty, maybe there's a yellow card, but it's not necessarily a red card. That's what, that's what surprised me both times. Uh, so is it that what we were saying when it's the last uh, man, uh, then you get a, a red card, but if not, you get a yellow card? Because I don't understand. I'm thinking a penalty is, a, is uh, enough punishment already. Why, why uh, give a red card on top of it? Well, the rules clearly suggest that uh, uh, when a player uh, tries to stop a clear goal-scoring chance, you know, it should be a red card. And... Uh, 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 and a penalty, uh, you know, considering the fact that the uh, foul is actually uh, committed in the box. So the rules clearly say that uh, uh, when a player actually tra tries to stop, uh, stop a clear goal-scoring chance, it should be a red and and a penalty. You know, so that's what the rules say. It it differs when who who is probably pulling you back or is the last man. If it's the goalkeeper, it's obviously and uh, he's inside the box then it's a penalty and in my opinion most should be a yellow card rather than a red card but if it's a defender then and he's the last man and prevents uh, somebody from from uh, going on and uh, scoring or having a goal scoring opportunity then it's a red card so it depends what position the player is in and who the player is differs whether it's a goalkeeper differs when it's a defender and whether it's in the box or outside the box okay so, so it's obvious, obviously up to the referee's uh, decision of how it should be okay i think you want to add something else yeah well it depends uh, it uh, depends on the referee you know and and his perception you know okay Um, all right, so that's Kira now. Thanks. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk a bit more on uh, sportsmanship, um, but on the from the point of view of the of the fans now, because I don't know if you've seen this sign that Ultrasur was showing. Did you see it? Yep. Yes, I did. Okay. So they were saying basically that uh, we're looking for a worthwhile rival for a decent derby. And um, there was uh, David on Twitter. Uh, Twitter name is Nuber85. He was saying, oh, you're going to see, you know, all the Q&As, all the, all the uh, radio shows and TV shows, they're going to talk about it. And they're going to be like, Real Madrid should be, uh, shouldn't do that, shouldn't allow that. It's not, uh, it's not good sportsmanship um, qualities and everything. And he just kind of disagreed. He said that, you know, it was all good fun. So I was wondering, I don't like, free provocation and uh but i don't know if it was just you know uh, just humor basically or or if you thought it was uh out of line guys yeah uh, uh, uh let me go first um uh, yeah, sure. uh i think it's all in good fun it was okay. a brilliant brilliant banner in my opinion <laughs> and um, it's all in good fun it's a derby you you've won since 1999 and um, it, you just it's all in a good a good fun and it's it was really cheeky i would admit but i don't think it's arrogant of us uh, arrogant of the fans I mean, when uh, United won the Premier League last season, there was there were some fans who who had the sign uh, at Anfield saying Manchester United 19, Liverpool 18, or something along those lines. So people found that to be uh, out of line. Some found it to be out of line. Some found it to be really courageous. So it depends who, who what everybody's perspective is, but in my opinion, it was all in good fun. Okay. 
Well, I thought uh, uh, that the fans were uh, being uh, disrespectful, you know, and such banner should be banned uh, from the. I was team. sure. I was sure <laughs> you uh, would say that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, such uh, provocative banners can actually uh, lead to uh, vandalism. You know, uh, if if the players, uh, if the fans uh, lose their head and uh, they they start fighting, you know, it can it can uh, cause a lot of trouble. You know, so such uh, a provocative banner should be banned. You know, and, and I was really surprised that uh, uh, fans could actually uh, sneak uh, sneak the banner. Uh, you know, and uh, nobody stopped them from uh, from doing it. You but know? I think uh, it, was, it was like A4 sheets, or no, not maybe not A4, but like bigger. Um, like it was piece by piece, so you can have that in your. You know, one has it in his pocket, and the other one in his bag, and nobody sees it, right? I think that's where, how it was. It's actually, yeah. it, it's not that difficult uh, when you're with the Altasur. They are uh, the more they're the most influential. Uh, uh, groups when it comes to a club and I don't think it's that difficult when it comes to going past the security and get taking it in there and it wasn't a banner j- because uh, somebody on Twitter mentioned it wasn't a banner but a mosaic yes so, exactly yeah so I have no idea how it's gotten inside but I don't think it will be very difficult for ultra so to get it inside but let me tell you the, the, I mean, I'm not saying the security at the stadium is not good because they do check you out and everything, but uh, it's a little bit um, inconsistent. Like sometimes they check my purse and my bag. And if I have something that like, oh no, you cannot get in with your juice box, you know, you have to open it and, and drink it or whatever, or throw it away. And sometimes they just see you and I don't know, maybe they like your face and just, yeah, that's okay. And they don't look at anything. So, it's, uh, I, I don't know, you know, yeah. yeah, it's not, I think somebody, I don't, I think I read something about that, that in the UK, maybe there was more security than in Spain and the stadium. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I was having a discussion with another... Oh, uh, it was you, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was having a discussion with another uh, journalist and, um, uh, I have seen uh, with the with the amount of uh, flares and and lasers that are used in uh, Spain and Italy, uh, I think England is much safer. And he happened to mention that uh, groups like Ultrasur or uh, groups of Atletico fa- uh, of uh, fans in South America, they have a lot of power. They just can do things without much of a problem that's how that's how influential they have been throughout the years and continue to be but f- police in england have done a, a fairly good job i would say of uh, cutting down on uh, hooligan uh, groups yeah so it's difficult when if you if you're trying to sneak past objects if you're in england okay Okay, so I guess like on this one, Tanuj was saying it was all in good fun, and a picture saying, you know, this is not acceptable. I, I was sure that would happen. So, <laughs> so yeah, I- I'm not a big fan of provocation myself. So, okay. but but again, I'm thinking maybe when we go to uh, to their stadium, maybe they're gonna have some kind of sign in response. So we'll see. Provided they uh, beat us, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so let's say that would not happen. That would not happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now I wanted to talk about maybe the the month of December. So uh, unless you have something else to say about the game in particular, then we can move to the to the new topic, the month of December. Nope. Nope. One, You're I think. good. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be uh, pretty busy because there's the trip to Amsterdam and then there's the Clásico and then there's uh, Copa del Rey starting. So I was wondering um, if you thought that given the uh, Ajax game will have no consequences whatsoever on the Champions League, uh, do you think that some players will actually uh, not do uh, take the trip and they will stay in Madrid, the key players? In view of the Clásico, or you think they will all go and play normally? I think it would be the... Yeah, please, go please ahead, go sorry. ahead. Please go ahead. You go ahead, please. 
uh, I think uh, it would be the same uh, way we had uh, against Zagreb. Um, resting a few, you know, making uh, a few starting 11 or the first 11 play the first half. The same uh, idea, I think, um, will be repeated against Ajax. Okay. And uh, uh, hee I think we will play uh, with, um, with, with the regular 11, yeah. with the regular squad. Because with the lead now to six, uh, we need to maintain it and probably and hopefully uh, take it to nine points. I'm hoping Rayo Vallecano beat uh, Barcelona as well. Uh, They're neighbors too. Let's see if our neighbors are helping us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Getafe helped. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm hoping uh, Vallecano do as well. <laughs> so, I if we can take it to if we can go into the Clasico with six points or nine points or God forbid three points, uh, it would be uh, it would be a good uh, good plan, I think. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's quite difficult to predict, you know, it's quite uh, difficult to say. But then I think uh, uh, our main players should not uh, travel, you know, because uh, traveling all the way, uh, you know, would be uh, difficult and uh, would uh, tire the players, you know. So I think uh, our uh, main players shouldn't travel. And uh, probably our French players can uh, travel and uh, play the game, uh, considering the fact that we have uh, won the group already. You know, and the next game against uh, Sporting Gijon, uh, all the players, all our main players should start and uh, uh, we should uh, make the lead uh, uh, nine points. You know, and now it's six. Uh, we uh, win that game, it, it's going to be nine. Yeah. Okay. But it's so, not up to us, okay. though, right? The nine points, it's up to, to Rayo Vallegano, really. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, right. because Barcelona that's play uh, on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. True. Yeah. So we will know whether it's three point, uh, whether it's down to three points or nine points, or if it's a draw, or something else. Yeah, we I were talking with. Oh, I'm sorry, Apex, go ahead. Yeah, I I hope it's nine. I hope it's nine. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Who doesn't hope for that? Um, we were talking earlier with Apex uh, on the chat that. Uh, Barcelona was having like it, uh, their game on Tuesday. They were already tired, and so basically the calendar was a bit in our favor. So, um, how do you think that will affect their form uh, going into the Clasico? I guess it, it probably won't change anything because going to the Clasico, they're gonna be like super pumped up anyway. So, yeah, um, it's it's been. Uh, a, Barcelona had a difficult uh, uh, set of games. Um, they were obviously they had to play uh, Milan with a full strength squad, and uh, their over reliance. Uh, I I just it's difficult now for them more more now because uh, they lost to Getafe, so the the pressure is on them and the fixtures really don't help. Okay. Yeah, true. The the pressure is on Barcelona now. They're they're six points, uh, six points off the pace, and I think uh, the players against uh, uh, Getafe, you know, they they just uh, uh, did not look uh, did not look hungry, you know, uh, because uh, whenever I watch uh, uh, a Barcelona games, all the players they they look really really uh, really really hungry, you know, but then they uh, did not look so. Uh, maybe because they were really tired, because uh, the match against uh, Milan really drained them, you know. Uh, they won three two. But uh, but it really drained them, you know. Uh, but uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to facing uh, Real Madrid, I think uh, they'll be back to their best because it it it's uh, uh, probably the uh, biggest game uh, for them thus far. So they are they're going to be uh, back and uh, let's just see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any um, idea hypothesis on? Um, the type of uh, formation that both teams will use in the classical, I mean? No, I uh, wouldn't be sure of it, you know. But then one thing is for sure, I think uh, the uh, tables have turned uh, this time around and I think uh, Real Madrid is surely going to win this one. Oh! <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, mind you, mind you, it's... Uh, even though the pressure is on them to put this, put the tables uh, even, 
uh, it's also difficult it's also a pressure situation for us to maintain the lead that we have right now because i think last year we had a decent uh, lead i think by decent i mean 3 points uh 3 points or 2 points something uh, to that effect and uh, we let go of that so we can't let go of this 6 uh, point lead and now i think okay yeah that's true that's true we just have to keep on winning yeah we just have to keep on winning okay so we we'll see what happens then <laughs> uh okay uh, man of the match in your opinion i would say it would be a cristiano ronaldo okay tanur um it's a tough one because i didn't find anybody to be overly consistent throughout the game but um uh, if it has to be i would go with cristiano as well because the chances he created for himself and for others uh with obviously di maria's goal as the assist okay yeah i was yeah, hesitating was... with iguain also but hmm. yeah the uh, di maria's goal was probably the pick of the lot you know because uh, the way ronaldo uh, goes past defenders and uh, passes it to him and the way uh, di maria finished it off so uh, that was the pick of the goals for me okay okay so now i would like to move on to another topic that has nothing to do with the with the game but i thought that it would be nice to maybe get to know uh uh each other's countries better uh, since we're all so international and uh, since you guys are both from india i thought you could uh, enlighten us a bit about your country and um football in your country because uh you know there are a lot of of uh, clichés about about india and i don't know if they're true or if they're true only in some regions or if it's uh totally wrong So what can you tell us uh about for instance um the fact that some areas don't have light uh and, and the fact that it's a very poor country and the fact also that it doesn't have enough or good enough uh football installations to even uh, dream of have of of having a a strong spot on the international scene as far as football is concerned like what can you tell us about your country and and about the clichés that go around about it uh yeah yeah please please go ahead uh, sorry uh it's uh as with any country i think uh, there are clichés associated with them india also has a set of them and uh, sometimes they are true sometimes they are not and sometimes if when they are true they are usually exaggerated okay and um, as for let's say, let's let me just go one by one with your question yes um uh, some areas not having electricity probably true i have okay. not been to the to all the parts of the country and uh, so mostly not even the interior parts of it where the situation is uh, more difficult than it is in the major cities so they have electricity there but not as easily available as it is in major cities uh, even major cities such as uh, delhi have uh, electricity problems with uh, a few power outages uh, which is unheard of in uh, first world countries okay so it happens but the situation isn't as bleak i think as it is made out to be okay uh so further uh, if i go um uh what else besides the electricity uh, the, there are some people who go without uh, two meals a day so the situation as it's a third world country let's be honest about it okay uh, so situation is difficult and with the economy the way it is um it's not helped uh, further with funds not being enough with the population being uh, so high Okay. And um, so that's pretty much it. And uh, when it comes to football, it's not 
I mean, I'm talking about Indian football here. Yeah, yeah. And it's not uh, developed. It's it's still second fiddle, I think, to cricket. I think second, um, and uh, it's it's a long way away from uh, from getting to a good decent level of even matching the the heights of uh, countries such as. Um, uh japan or south korea or china's development so it's still a long way to go okay well i think that uh, we are struggling you know uh, when we talk about football we are re- really struggling you know but uh, uh, there are uh, there are positive you know uh, players like sunil chetri and jj they are uh, currently having a trials at rangers you know so which is a really big thing which is a very very big thing for us and uh, i remember sunil chetri uh, saying once that uh, sunil chetri uh, by the way is the most uh, uh, popular uh, footballer here you know okay and uh, okay. yeah uh, he was once saying that uh, he has uh, no grounds to uh, practice on you know so he 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 plays for the national team you know and when he has no grounds to practice on think about the budding footballer that's amazing you know, yeah 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 so uh, the budding footballers obviously they they uh, do not have uh, uh, do not have access to proper grounds you know which is uh, which is not going to help them so uh, we we are a population of 1.2 billion people you know and i'm quite sure that uh, we can produce 20 25 uh, world class footballers but uh, but the government has to pump in money you know without the money i don't think it's uh, going to be possible you know we need stadiums uh, we need uh, coaches who can uh, 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 who can come from foreign countries and uh, who can work on our players uh, make them better you know so uh, we we have a long long way to go but uh, they uh, there are positives you know i hope sunil chetri and jj both uh, uh, both get contracts at uh, rangers you know uh, that will be a really really big move for us you know okay well thanks a lot guys that was really interesting <laughs> i was Don't writing you... everything <laughs> down cuz I, i was like happy to you know find out from from you from people who actually know what india is and how it is to live there yeah uh, well i would just like to yeah i would just like to add uh, that sunil chetri uh, he signed for qpr qpr they are uh, playing in the premier league now he he signed for them uh, two years back you know but uh, he he did not get his work permit and and his visa you know uh, he uh, he also played for uh, kansas city wizards uh, uh, which is in the usa okay you know, he, he yeah he he did not play for them actually but then he signed for them and uh, something went wrong and uh, he Uh, did not get a chance to play for them so uh, sunil chetri is surely going to uh, move abroad and uh, play in a better league okay okay in so fact, there's hope <laughs> in, yeah in fact uh, baichu bhutia was the first uh, indian to get uh, uh, to play in 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 a country outside india he played for berry fc which are currently in uh, the conference if i'm not wrong and uh, so he started off and besides him there are there are as uh, apikshit mentioned uh, sunil chetri and jj who are uh, currently on trial with the rangers besides them uh, there is uh, subrata bose who was pos who was named uh, to be uh, in trials uh, with a club in australia but that didn't uh, materialize and uh, it's still a long way to go it's it's really difficult for a for an indian player to be picked but if they do uh, it's i was reading an article on uh, some a few minutes back saying uh, if rangers do sign uh, sunil chetri they would strike gold because india there are a lot of indian uh, football fans who follow um uh, European football. Yeah. So if they if Rangers do manage to sign him, if they do sign him, not do manage, but do sign him, then uh, their uh, their following in India would increase because I think SPL is broadcasted in India now. So it's it will be uh, brilliant for the Scottish Premier League. it will be uh, brilliant for uh, for indian football as well but not uh, not something to be overly uh, and excited about in the long range of in the long run of things i think because one player 
put, put brings in the money but does it help the whole uh, country the country as a whole uh, i i don't uh, i don't think so uh, tanush did you say uh, subrato both uh, is he's uh, subrato paul by the way yeah yeah i said subrato paul i think okay okay i <laughs> unless i meant subrato both who is i don't know who but he is an, a celebrity as well somewhere i'm going to need you guys that's rahul both mm, okay maybe i just mixed up <laughs> i'm going to need okay. you guys to send me the names in written because i am not going to be able to write that correctly otherwise yeah i'll certainly do it okay <laughs> thank you um okay so what well, i was very interesting anything else you want to say or that's it that's, that's it, it mm-hmm. okay yeah. what well, i was really really great thank you guys for sharing with us um all those information all that information about your country and football in your country and i hope that the listeners will have enjoyed that too you know uh, getting to know india um and well i think that's it for this q and a so thank you so much guys and uh, thank you to our listeners for listening and um well, we'll see you around at the next q and a i guess have a good um, afternoon tanuj and night apekshit <laughs> And thanks a lot for your participation as usual. Bye. Bye. This was a madridismo.org production.